Hey yo! Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, this is uh, Rob's rambling about episode two. Uh, so you know, last time it went well. Uh, I, uh, I I know I got some laughs from like I got messages from people who watched the first video and they thought the title was funny. So I guess I'll keep that up. Uh, I'm enjoying doing that. So. Um, but, you know, I'm just going to start with, like, what I've been doing this week. Uh, I, I've been playing uh, Tear Ring Saga. Um, I announced that on my Twitter, that I'm going to be reviewing that game. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, it's essentially uh, a Fire Emblem game, more or less. Uh, spoilers, that's what the game is. So, uh, the original creator of Fire Emblem, after they made the last SNES game, uh, but before they finished the canceled N64 game, uh, left uh, the company and created his own company, made his own Fire Emblem game. Uh, Nintendo sued him over it. It was like a whole thing. Um, but uh, ended up making two games in that series uh, and then just disappeared f f as far as I know. Like, no one knows where he is now. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I will say, you know, it's a game so far. I'm, I'm enjoying it for what it is. I'm really bad at tactic RPGs, like, you know, Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, Fire Emblem and all that. I'm really bad at those. <laughs> and this game doesn't have, uh, more modern sensibilities, like, like a casual mode in Fire Emblem. And I really like that. So it's a bummer. It's not here. Uh, I have save states, so... You know, it's something, but, uh, yeah, I've been playing that. I'm about a fourth of the way done. Uh, there's apparently 40 chapters and I'm, I'm about to get to chapter 10. So I'm roughly a fourth done. Uh, you know, uh, the, the only legal way to play it, by the way, is emulation. So if you have any interest in it, that's the only way you're going to do it. Um, there's no other option, literally. Like you, you can buy a, Japanese copy, I guess, but unless you can read Japanese, you're you're not going to have a good time. So, um, what else have I been doing this week? Um, uh, my girlfriend and I finished Paper Mario 64. That's an amazing game. You should all play it. Uh, it's... I've always enjoyed, like, the versatility of the badge system, but I really wish you weren't limited to 30 badge points. I, I think... I know limiting is what, you know stokes creativity but i i think legitimately it is just too small like even just 40 or you know 50 badge points would have opened it up a lot more uh, i know there's there's probably like a fan hack or something that's like 99 badge points have at it like but that's too high i feel like that's too high and you just equip all the fucking badges <laughs> um but yeah we we finished that game and that was super fun it was her first time playing through it um, I, I've played through it like a dozen times, so, you know, it is what it is. Like, the second we started our playthrough and we got up to chapter three, uh, you know, and we finished our session for that time, I hopped on my own file and then, like, played all the way up to chapter four, I, I just smoking everything, and I'm like, God, this game's good. <laughs> I really enjoy this game. I, uh, there was, uh... When it first came to NSO, someone mentioned uh, in a server that uh, Paper Mario 64 has backtracking just like Thousand Year Door was, so they never really understood the complaints that Thousand Year Door has too much backtracking. Uh, and I was like, oh, no, 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 like, it's not that bad. There's a lot of backtracking in that game, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Like, if I, if I didn't tell, well... I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say definitively, but I feel like it is easier to miss uh, the uh, the seeds you need for Chapter 6. Uh, I feel like those could have easily been missed had I not, like, warned Jess ahead of time or, you know, anyone else playing the game, right? Uh, but oh, overall, overall it, you know, the backtracking is there. Like, for sure. But I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as Thousand Year Door. I think Thousand Year Door... The fact it turned an entire chapter into just a joke about backtracking in a game that has chapter 4 and 5 
which are all about backtracking. Uh, I, I still think Thousand Year Door is more egregious about it, but Paper Mario 64 does have a lot of backtracking, and it's pretty rough. But it is what it is. It's still a great game. Uh, if I had to rank them all, though, like in terms of like Paper Mario, uh, for me, my personal favorite is uh, Bug Fables. <laughs> I just prefer Bug Fables. I think the character writing is much more in tune with the kind of RPGs I like. Like having an actual cast of characters and not like Mario partner, you know, like having a cast is really nice. Um, and then below that is Thousand Year Door uh, because I like the visuals, the comedy, the writing. It has the backtracking, but I think overall it's a better game than 64 but 64 and thousand year door are like just like right here like and then bug fables is like up here but like the the other two are like you know close second and third it could change any day of the week which one i prefer over the other which you know happens all the time with my favorite games which is fine uh and then uh and then super is like again like you know if if Thousand Year Door and 64 are right here, Super is like right here. You know, it's, again, that one's pulled through with its writing. I really enjoy the writing in that game. Uh, not a fan of how they basically just got rid of partners, uh, but they at least made Tippy an interesting character. Uh, like the main partner, I get a partner? Yeah, like with, with quotes on that, right? Uh, She's at least more interesting. She's like a well-developed character, so I enjoy her at the very least. Uh, and then Sticker Star is just one of the worst games Nintendo's ever published. So, yeah, that's... It's it's not even just like, it's a bad Mario game. It's a bad game. Like, the how you... Like, the fact that like if you don't use the right sticker at the right time on the right boss nets you a game over is fucking bullshit. And it... Like, the lack of hints for that uh, is also bad. Like, and it's... I just don't think it's a very fun or interesting system they put together. Uh, musically, it's, it's good. I, I like Sticker Star's music. It's fun, right? like John T. Mario tunes, right? But I think, you know, the whole story about how Miyamoto was like, oh, put it in the Mushroom King, like Mushroom only, like make it main Mario stuff only. I I, I don't think it, him directly saying that was the problem, but I think they took that concept a little too far <laughs> and then they brought everything down to bare bones Mario. Like, the fact Bowser has no voice lines in, like, the entire, or no dialogue in the entire game is just, like, you were a highlight of the past three games. What happened? Well, not so much 64. 64, he's fine. But, like, like he's just a villain in that one. But, like, Thousand Year Door and Super, he's hilarious. He's great. Like, and then you had the other Mario RPGs at the time. It's like, what the hell? We Just, like, a couple years prior, we had, what was it, uh... Bowser's Inside Story, and you were great in that. Like, it literally a whole game about you. <laughs> but it is what it is. I don't want to turn this into donkey on Sticker Star all the time. Oh, and Color Splash is a... I don't know, it's fine. I, I'm never going to play that game again. Uh, it's a less awful Sticker Star, so that's a victory to some degree. I guess I, I don't know, t take your W's when you can. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and then Origami King, I didn't play. I'm, I'm tired of that formula. Uh, I don't approve of them taking the entire franchise in that formula. I wouldn't mind if they were labeled as like spinoff adventure games and we still got Mario RPGs, but the fact we have no other Mario RPG is a bummer. I mean, I, Yes, we have Mario Rabbids, which is one, my favorite game on the Switch. Uh, well, not including games I already love more than it, but it's my favorite Mario game, period. So, uh, but the fact, you know, it sucks that the only turn-based RPG we have for Mario is a, a tactic RPG that's uh, essentially uh, 
like tied to Ubisoft. Like we need Ubisoft to make this game, otherwise it wouldn't exist. And Ubisoft's not a great company. Like uh, they've done they've done some uh, some naughty things. I'm not not a not a big fan of them. So that'll be that'll be a game I see if I can get used. Cause God, like I'm really excited for Sparks of Hope, and and I can't wait to see more gameplay of it. Like they they showed the alpha gameplay at E3, and I just lost my shit because for the longest time I was hearing rumors that like, oh, like Nintendo doesn't want to do Mario Rabbids too. They, you know, and and then Ubisoft is like, okay, let's make a Star Wars game or something with it, or a Disney game or something, right? And I guess like that came from like a combination of like. Ubisoft's going to be making a Star Wars game, and then, like, there was, like, another t tactic RPG in development at that uh, Ubisoft Milan studio. By the way, shout out to Milan. I got relatives who live there. They're cool as hell. Um, they don't know how to use a phone to save their life, but they're cool, so that's what's important. But shout out to Milan. Milan's great. I've been there. It's actually, it's a beautiful place, Milan. Well... I mean, I haven't been there since, when was the last time I've been there? Fourth grade? <laughs> 29 now to give you an idea how old that is. So, yeah, it's been a while. Like early or mid-2000s. Like, yeah, it's it's been a minute. So, it is what it is. Though. Um, but yeah, uh, Mario Rabbids is my favorite Mario game, bar none. Uh, if, you know, we want to break that down... Like, I ha my favorite Mario platformer is Galaxy 1. Um, and then my uh, just Mario game period favorite is Mario plus Rabbids. I, just, I love the writing. I love the... Uh, the gameplay is super good. It feels super nice. It flows well. And I'm so happy it's getting a sequel. I'm so happy it's getting a sequel. Oh, but it is what it is. Like, I, I kid you not, if it weren't for the fact that Sonic Mania and Persona 5 came out the same year as Mario Rabbids, that would have been my game of the year. Like, God, those those edged it out just a little bit. Just a little bit. But God, it's so fucking good. Please play it if you haven't, by the way. It goes on sale all the time. Uh, It's like literally all the time. Like, you can sometimes find the Gold Edition, which is, like, the main game, and all of the DLC. Oh my god, the DLC is so good, too. Um, it goes on sale all the time. It's, like, sometimes it's, like, ten bucks for the the main game and all the DLC combined into one. Like, oh, but I like physical game. Whatever. Just go buy it. I don't care what you want. Just go buy it. I don't care. It's used or whatever, like, digital, I don't care. Just buy it. Play the game. Apparently the game surprisingly sold like millions, like actual millions. So like go buy more millions, right? Oh boy. Uh, what what else did I, I'm, I'm rambling about Mario RPGs now. I really want a new one, like, like made with Nintendo or something, you know, like I, like Mario Rabbids is mostly just the Milan team doing their thing, right, uh, with, you know, blessings from Nintendo or whatever. But, like, I, I would like, not specifically these series, but, like, Paper Mario, Mario and Luigi, like, the, like that were made in Japan with Nintendo. Like, I, I, want, I want something like that to come back, right? Like, we, we don't have, as far as I know, like, any announced RPGs that, like, fill that sort of like, niche, I guess. I Like, you know, like I said, we have Bug Fables and whatnot, uh, and that and that's a fantastic game, but it's not Mario. <laughs> you know, like, I, I want, like, a big-budget Mario RPG, but I guess we don't get that now, <laughs> and that's a bummer. Uh, but it, it is what it is. Like, I, I, I want something that, like, harkens back to Mario RPG, Paper Mario, Mario and Luigi. Like, I want a fourth, <laughs> like, a fourth one added on to it. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, we're, there's still plenty of RPGs out there. Uh, not enough turn-based, which is a whole 
a whole thing I can get into uh, about how I think the industry as a whole has turned away from turn-based RPGs. Haha, <laughs> turned away. Uh, because they think, oh, dumb idiot gamers don't want these, but, you know, if Persona 5 and Dragon Quest XI show, people do buy them in droves, you just have to make them, and they have to be enjoyable, so... Oh, and then also Yakuza 7 sold Gangbusters. It's like one of the best in the series in terms of sales. Like, oh, it's such a good game. Love Yakuza Like a Dragon. So good. <clears throat> oh, what else did I do this week? Um, I got sick. Uh, one day I was like, you know what? Like, I got a little bit of extra cash. I paid rent this month. I'm going to order a breakfast pizza because I really enjoy breakfast food. Uh, really regret that, uh, was in, not sitting well with me, uh, had to rush to the bathroom a couple times, like, oof, it was, it was not fun, I, I, like, couldn't even take a nap, because the second I would lay down, my stomach would start gurgling again, it was awful, and I'm not gonna get detailed, because I know no one wants to hear, like, my escapades in the restroom, but I just, I was super sick, and it sucked. Uh, I asked my roommate to, like, bring me a Sprite, <laughs> and he brings it to me, and I'm like, ugh, like, when I'm trying to pick it up. <sighs> that that was not fun. I dealt with that for about a day or so, and it just it made me physically ill. I think the pizza's actually sitting in the fridge right now. I need to throw that out. God. It was, like, a day or two ago, and it was just so awful. Um. Uh, yeah, someone's upstairs. Someone's awake right now. So, getting ready for work and whatnot. I'm I'm still looking for a job. Uh, I've I've applied to a couple places. Um, I've been trying to find uh, a job in some sort of uh, something like like social media or something like that. You know, like I I would love to be like like on. Twitter talking about and getting hype over like games or anime whatever right and uh, there's a there's a couple like places that I've emailed uh, one of the places I emailed uh, was uh, the Trevor project um, and they and they were cool about it they by the time I had sent in my application they already had someone in the final stages of like pra like getting hired on so like you know no hard feelings there that I still support the Trevor Project, they're amazing. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, obviously, you know, it's never, it's always a bummer to be like, oh, no, you don't have this job. But, you know, they were cool about it. They were like, hey, we already filled the position. You know, they're in the final stages of it. But, you know, feel free to apply if we ever hire for something else. And I'm like, hell yeah. Like, no problem. Like, and like I said, I, I actually appreciate they responded at all. Because most places just don't answer you back ever. Which is, like really sucks <laughs> it's just really not good uh i you know I, I feel like it should be the norm just to send someone back an email being like hey we've decided yes or no like uh, you know as a courtesy like there is i saw a tweet for uh like a voice actor who was like hey people don't Send us emails that are like, oh, you were my second choice, or blah, 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 this and that. Don't say anything like that. Just say, like, hey, we decided to go with somewhere else. Thank you for your time. That's all it is. It's it's cool. It's, like, not at all harsh vibes. Like, don't tell people, like, oh, you almost had it. Because then that's fucked up. That That's, like, saying, you were just barely not good enough. And it's, like, that that's the vibe it sounds. But, you know, Trevor Project was cool about it. And I appreciate that. I'm... I, I feel bad. I feel like I need to apologize for my rambling. It's literally called Rob's Rambling About, so I'm not sorry at all? Question mark. Uh, like, I, I was about to say, like, what did this have to do with anything? What did it, what does anything I talk about have to do with anything here? Oh, yeah, people be walking around, getting the kid ready for school and whatnot. Uh, I, I don't think any of you can hear that. I think only... Most of you can hear my voice. Like the other day, I think either in the last episode or something else, someone walked, like it was Summer, my roommate, or one of my roommates, who walked up 
and like behind the camera and like you could see it she like i think or something right and she talked apparently she was like right here and no one could hear her at all and it was like oh geez <laughs> well i guess my microphone's a little too good with the uh because i i use a program called rtx voice it's by nvidia um they it's essentially like a software filter that for microphones that uses my graphics card. Uh, I'm I'm bare bonesing it right there, but that's more or less what it is. Um, and it's super good. But the problem is there were a couple times in the last episode, and even during the Mario 64 randomizer episode, uh, where you you can't hear me laugh even though I'm right here because the noise removal feature was too strong. Um, so this time uh, I, I found out I had both uh, noise remover and echo remover. So I took off echo remover because I thought maybe, you know, when I was high pitched, it was coming across as an echo. We'll see how this episode plays out. And then next week, you know, I'll get better and better as time goes on. Um, but yeah, uh, hi Summer. Good morning. Hi. You okay? I don't care. Oh, that's great. I'm I'm recording a thing though. Well, I'm sorry. You got a Q-tip? You okay? You okay? That's good. She's cleaning her ears, everyone. I'm glad. I'm proud of you. Keep it in mind though. You can tell me about it. You can wave to people if you want. There you go. <laughs> That's your second appearance on my podcast. So, thanks. Oh, gosh. I'm famous. <laughs> She's famous now, everyone. She's here. Did you tell them about the... Uh... Did I tell them about what? Oh, my God. I can't. I can tell them about that. I totally forgot. So, my roommate, Troy, fucked up really bad. Uh, so, we've had... Okay, I've lived with Troy, for I kid you not, like... Since maybe 2017, 2018. Uh, so it's been, a, it's been a few years, right? And we have had the same tray for like pizzas and stuff like that that we use all the time. Uh, and <laughs> after, after four years, he finally did it. He accidentally put the, the pizza cutter on the fucking, <laughs> on, on the pan. And it's like, it's like fused to it now. <laughs> he put it in there and we're upstairs and we're upstairs and we're just like, God, what is that smell? Like, can you go check that out? And he goes downstairs, he opens the oven. He's like, oh shit. He had put like pizza bagels on there. And then he also put the cutter on there for some reason. Cause he was also like kind of cleaning the counter a little bit. Um, but yeah, that. <laughs> It's, it's so, he put he put uh the pizza cutter out there and it fused to the thing now we can't get it off we're gonna have to buy a new one we're just gonna throw that one out and get a new one but like <laughs> it's hilarious that what ruined it was the pizza cutter that like has plastic on it so it fused itself to the thing it's so good Oh jeez. Uh what what else be going on? Um I feel I feel like there are things that have been going on this week. I just don't remember any of them. And that's going to be like an ongoing issue with the series is that I'm going to like run out of stuff to talk about cuz I am I'm not sure like what's fun for everyone and if you're wondering why like the light keeps coming on and off. It's my computer. I'm like browsing at the same time I'm talking. So it keeps my mind active. I get to participate in internetery while I do this, and it's enjoyable, to say the least. Um, we're getting closer, me and Jess, to beating Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, I've beaten it thousands of times. Oh, I don't know about that. I've beaten it a lot. But I, uh, she's never beaten it before, and I'm excited. She's been enjoying it so far, as far as I know. <laughs> as far as I know, she's been enjoying it. But, uh, God, that game is so good. That's, uh, like, I almost sort of, I was talking to my uh, friend 112 about it, 
and I almost sort of likened it to like Mega Man games where you're supposed to repeat it on playthroughs and opt like or Sonic games where you optimize your route and like you get more efficient as time goes on. <clears throat> it's just it's so interesting to see her method of playing through it because like it's like kind of like she's just exploring sometimes and yeah i guide her a lot and i'm trying to stop doing that because like i want to be like oh you go here next you go here next um but like now i've tried to get into the okay we can go do this we can go do that like i i did the same thing during our persona 5 playthrough where i was kind of like okay we have like some options here right like because in like persona especially like modern persona games uh your options can get a little overwhelming at times uh but that's the thing you just gotta like power through it really more than anything um it's it gets rough you know uh oof. um sorry saw that made me go oof. um but yeah like when you when you don't options on the player they get overwhelmed pretty easily but that's the thing if you know, like, when you're playing Banjo and you're playing Persona, you're playing games that have a lot of options, just take your time. Take your time. No one, no one's rushing you. You're chilling. You're having a good time. Je Jess's first playthrough of Persona 5 Royal was like 200 hours. The game is not 200 hours long. You can beat that in like 130. But we took our time. We spent I, I spent a lot of time in the Velvet Room doing all the fusion stuff. The fusion stuff is so much fun. I love fusions in Persona. It's such a cool system. And I know tons of RPGs do it. Like, I know Persona didn't invent fusion mechanics. But, like, it's just such a cool concept. And it's really simple once you understand, the like, the core of it. Um, and thank God... Persona 5 Royal basically uses the same system as Persona 4 Golden because in vanilla Persona 4 and before, you don't get to select, uh, or I guess Persona 3 Portable and before, because that came out half. Uh, Persona 3 Portable and before, you don't, I, as far as I remember, you don't get to choose what skills you get in fusions. Like, you, like when you load up the fusion, it'll load a random jargon of skills and you have to keep backing out and refreshing the fusion and it'll change which ones you get i, I really hate that system <laughs> that system sucks ass but uh persona 5 just mm. it's not my favorite obviously like it, you see my channel it's all decked out with persona 4 uh, other than my crummy like YouTube banner, go look at my YouTube banner. It's literally just like a black image that says my channel, but it's like I think it's spelled wrong. Uh, I I think I put that up there like ten years ago and just never changed it. It's very funny. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, God, I, I I would love to do like a full on review of the Persona series, but I like. Tearing Saga is sort of, like, because I'm reviewing that. It's not this, it's not tomorrow's video, but it's the next week after the third episode of Rambling. It'll be that video, because I want to have more time with it. I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to beat the game, because I'm bad at these games. I'm bad at tactics RPGs, guys. I I can't stress enough how bad I am. That's why I like my rest. It's easy. <laughs> it's good for easy. Uh, but for uh for tearing saga it sh it's shown me that like rpgs are not like an easy thing to review <laughs> like they take a lot of time especially ones in genres you're bad at <laughs> so uh it'll it'll be interesting to see what i think of it later on right um and so, but like i think going forward i'm going to stick to more traditional rpgs i i don't I don't think I should be reviewing tactic RPGs because, like, the exception would probably be Mario and Rabbits, Sparks O. Um, I'm not going to be doing, like, I'm not going to be doing the next Fire Emblem game, remake or not. I'm 
I'm just so, well, see, that's the thing. With casual mode, I think I can pull it off because with casual mode, you can kind of brute force your way through a lot of stuff. And I, and I like that. Yeah, like there is strategy to it, but like, you know, it makes it harder to just, like when you throw one unit at it, you screw yourself later, right? So there's incentive to use your other units, right? Um, and and for the uh, for the most part, um, I don't I like I, I I even out my units in tactic RPGs, which is not always a great thing. I know there's like a strategy, uh, like a literal strategy to like min maxing more or less uh, in tactics games, but I. I I don't know the first thing about min maxing in any firearm. <laughs> I know there's like a specific marriage setup you want for for Fire Emblem, like Awakening. Like I, I know it exists. Like you want these specific characters with these specific skills to link up because the kid they make is some unparalleled god who <laughs> can just fuck everything, right? And don't get me wrong, that's still fun in its own right, but it's not a genre I'm interested enough in to learn the min maxing. Um, because I'm bad at it. Uh, same with 2D Mario. I'm awful at 2D Mario. Couldn't play 2D Mario to save my life. Go watch. We have two episodes. Uh, me and Night Tide, Evernight Studio, uh, Daniel. Um, he uh, he and I played through uh, most of Mario World together, and it's uh, it's it's fun. But uh, I'm clearly the uh, the weaker of the two when it comes to platforming prowess. So you know, it is what it is. Um, but Al, why are you barking, bud? Stop barking. Why is the dog's going crazy right now? I don't even know if any of you can hear that. I, I think the mic is still good enough to block that out, but I don't know. Um, but, uh, what, what else has been going on? Um, so I've been, I've been reviewing tier rings and, uh, or like, you know, I got my notes and stuff on there. Right? Um, it's it's not a lot. It's I, I do what most reviewers do, where I just kind of jot down bullet points, more or less. Um, like I think of something, and I'm like, oh, I'll make a note of that for later. Uh, one of my notes, I don't remember the context of it. Uh, I just wrote no time for fucking with two exclamation marks on it. <laughs> so you know, we'll find out what that means when I get to that, right? But uh, and then I put Shaggy from Scooby Doo question mark. I I don't remember the context of those two notes, but I will go through my footage and find out. Uh, Cause I'm gonna, I think that's something else I'll want to do. I just thought of, um, I'll, I'll not be putting any spoilers in the review. I hate spoilers. I'm so spoiler averse. Um, Cause I did an awful job with, when it came to spoilers for Persona 4, when I first started showing people that game, my favorite game of all time, and I did it, I spoiled the shit out of it for so many people, and I felt so bad about it, because later I'm like, huh, that would have been cool to know on my own, like, uh, and I know some people are like, oh, it's been 10 whatever year, 20 years, whatever, I don't, I don't care, it, it's always new to somebody. Persona 4 was a 2008 PS2 game and a 2012 Vita game. No one played it, <laughs> comparatively. PC is the only time that like a mass audience has had some sort of opportunity to play this fucking game. Uh, and I hear it's sold like incredibly well, and I'm so happy for that. But uh, not everyone's played it. A game is always new to somebody, so always give your warnings and whatnot. Uh, but for my reviews, all my footage is going to basically be just, like, the first couple chapters of the game, uh, and then, like, interspersed later ones, because I'll record the f most of the full game, um, but yeah, in case I need, oh, hey, this happened on this map, and it, what I'm showing isn't spoiler, like, oh my god, this character dies, like, part of the story, or, no, like, I'm not doing big reveals, basically. Most of my footage will just seem like bare bones gameplay because it's from the early game. But I'll be talking like about the full game uh, in terms of gameplay. Just no heavy spoilers. If I if I ever spoil something, I will literally like there will be no missing that I am advertising. This is a spoiler or something. You know, like 
Uh, because, like I said, it's always new to somebody, and uh, it's uh, it's it's not it's not fair to just openly just discuss spoilers without saying, "Hey, spoilers for blank, spoilers for this, spoilers for that." Just a warning. That's it. People are like make it this big thing of like I should be able to freely talk about it, dude. Just let someone know. Just let someone know. It, I always tell people it wasn't until four years ago that Final Fantasy VII, one of the most iconic games of all time, was available to non PlayStation and non PC owners. Four years ago, that is wild to me. Wild. Like Nintendo fans, Xbox fans could not play that game. Hell, arguably PC fans couldn't really, because the only PC version you had was some crummy 2000 version that ran on unfinished code. And that's the version we all got later for ports. Thanks, Square. Uh, But, like, no one had access to this game. So, like, people are dropping reveals for it all the time, like, so casually. And I'm like, that's great. Cool. Like... (laughs) Uh, it's, it's just, don't do that to people. Like, it's, it's not cool. Like, it, oh, it's been so-and-so, you've had plenty of time. There, my girlfriend was literally born four years after the game came out. Like, what, what is she supposed to do about it? Like, she was, she was literally not even a twinkle in her dad's eye. <laughs> like, like, sometimes the shit happens. Like, it's. Uh, like, it's, just be cool about it. Just warn that you're going to talk about spoilers for a game. Or, or you know, if you're talking about the game just in general, and you feel like spoilers are going to be brought up at some point, just say, hey, we're going to be talking about whatever game. And, you know, spoiler warning, you know, as a heads up. Like, that's all it is. It's not, it's not like a big thing. <laughs> and people make it like a big thing. Like, just let me talk about it openly. Okay, let you ruin it for other people. Sure. Do whatever you want, but I'm just saying you're a dick for doing it. <laughs> it's not cool. Oh man. Uh have, you, have y'all y'all been playing Pokemon Legends? If you're at this point in the video, shout out to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh I'm really tempted to get Legends Art Gears. Cause it 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 looks fun. Doesn't look good. <laughs> like visually it looks looks rough. Uh they uh they really <laughs> they gotta get someone in there who knows what they're doing with that hardware because uh I don't know why Zelda like looks so good. R- chugs like a motherfucker. But like I don't know how Breath of the Wild looks good and play well, plays fine. Don't attack me. Uh but like even if it chugs a bit like at no point in the game was I like, oh, this hinders the experience, and I, and I get you know everyone's different, but like Pokemon looks like shit and chugs, and granted it has a good art style and that's fine because it does, but like Jesus man, <laughs> why do you look so bad? <laughs> why why does Mario run at like max resolution and frame rate and? Like, everyone's like, wow, beautiful game, great art style, and all this and that. But, like, and then Pokemon comes out, and they're like, oh, this is acceptable. It's like, I don't know, like, you can have, you can have visuals and gameplay, guys. It's like, and, oh, visuals don't matter. They do. They do. I always say this to people. If you were to play the Splatoon, like, alpha, like, it's, oh, imagine this. It's the literal same game. But it's those cubes of tofu for characters, you would not have a fun time. The aesthetic adds to that game so much. Splatoon, like, I would argue like 30% of Splatoon's charm is alone is from the visuals. Like how like the 90s of the original, the 2000s of uh, like two and Octo expansion, like like it's so much different when you have good art style and visuals like that run smoothly look good like no one is coming out here and saying smash ultimate best looking game of all time greatest looking game no have you seen donkey kong's fur texture it looks like fucking shit looks bad but 
you know, when you're like, when you realize like what that game is trying to do, it's understandable why it's a little rough. And even then, some of those char- the character models themselves look good. It's just, you know, Donkey Kong has like a flat, like mud poo texture. What is that? Like, right. I don't know. Like, I, I just, I wish I understood why people say visuals don't matter. And then they praise games that do have good visuals. Like, I thought the visuals don't matter. Like, I this is a two-way street, bud. You can't say visuals don't matter and then praise them when they're good. Like, I, you, you got to say they're good when they're good and they're bad when they're bad, you know? Like, and if you like Legends Arceus' art style, that's great. But, but God, man, that gameplay. Like, they, they've... Like, okay, I've, I've been spoiled on, like, everything about that game and I'm so mad because people just casually just drop shit in chats that are like, oh, here's music of this. And I'm like, what... Would have loved to have known about that myself, or they'll just they'll just ask about or like general questions in like a chat. They'll just be like, "Oh, is this very big thing or big sounding thing uh, like important?" Blah blah blah. And it's like I didn't even know that was in the game, but you're just you're out here in general chat being like, "Hey, where's it at?" <laughs> like. I'm harping too much on this. The game looks fun. And they've made a lot of additions and changes to the Pokemon formula that I've wanted for since Gen... I, what Gen 6 should have been for me. Like, I am ex- I was expecting all of these sort of small changes, but we never got them. And I don't know where people are getting this. Uh, apparently, like, some people believe this wasn't made by Game Freak. It's like, what are you smoking, dude? Like, of course it was made by... The game runs like shit. Like, <laughs> Little Town Hero couldn't even keep a consistent frame rate. And that was a fucking party game RPG. Uh, But, yeah, like, I don't know. Pokemon Legends looks fun. I'm tempted to buy it. But, like, I just don't have the money right now. So, like, I don't want to go, like, too ham on it, you know? Because if, if I go too ham on spending money, I'm going to be in a bad spot personally, right? So... I'm still, because like I said earlier, I'm still looking for a job. Uh, I would love something in social media. I try to like, you know, I, I know I, I come across as negative a lot of the time, but, you know, I try to be cool, like hang out, right? Like we're, we're all chilling, having a good time. Like the other day, Atlas tweeted, like explaining to my boss why I wanted to get my ass beat in the quote retweets or whatever. That's one of their most liked tweets now. And it's fucking hilarious. I love it. It's like. I would love to do small stuff like that every so often. And then like, I don't know, just get legit hype over cool games. Right. If there's any publisher out there looking for a very, very green social media person, I'm your, I'm your guy. Just let me know just, if, if someone sends this to, to someone at a, like a game company and that game company comments and was just like, Hey, shoot us an email or something. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. I, uh, you, you know what? <laughs> like, to be fair, like any experienced social media manager is probably going to ask for a lot more money than I would. So it's also that if you're, if you're a green studio, you don't got a lot of money. Maybe, maybe I'm your guy. <laughs> God, I'm coming across as so shitty and arrogant right now. I hate it. Um, but yeah, uh, what, what else is going on? Um, Something I've been wanting to work on is uh, gameplay commentaries. Uh, essentially, let's plays, but like with a more more of a focus, talking about like the actual design of the game, you know, our experiences with the game, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I've I've considered doing one for a couple games, but like I I wanted those to be special, where it's me and one other person. But if I were to get another person, I would want it to be someone who's like, I guess with a name that likes these games, right? Like, like I would, I would love, for example, if I were able to play the game worth a shit, I would love to do as a random example, would love to do an elite B agents commentary. Uh, we'd have to change the music, uh, or mute it, but, uh, I would love to do an elite B agents commentary with like Liam Robertson or something like that. you know, like, so, someone who's like kind of big and has a name attached to this like kind of IP, right? I would love to do something like that. That'd be a lot of fun. But 
uh, it's uh, it's nerve wracking because like, how do you message someone? And you're just like, hey, my YouTube channel of seventy subscribers, we uh, <laughs> we uh, need uh, we need you on here, right? It's like, no, no. <sighs> it is what it is. What else is going on? Is DoorDash a good job? I don't know. I use them all the time. I don't know. Is Do does DoorDash do DoorDashers? DoorDashies? DoorDasheries? I don't know. I don't know what they're called. I don't know what you're called. What are you called? In the comments, what are you called? Hashtag what are you called? Uh, do, do they make money? Because, like, I know DoorDash is, like, kind of a sketch about how they do, like, tips and stuff like that. From what I or is it, am I thinking of Uber? I don't know. There's one of those companies. Well, I think they're, I think they're, they all probably got something going on, right? But, I don't know. Like, what, what do you, what do y'all got, uh, what do y'all make it, right? Oh, you know what? I just remembered. Um, the, you know what I want to play? I would love to play the Bloodborne PS1 D-Make demo someone made where, uh, and you're like, wow, Rob, that's total left turn. I'm rambling. I'm literally rambling right now. Uh, but someone also made a Persona 4 Game Boy D-Make. Like, what? Like, it's a demo still. But, like, I need to play both of those. Those sound hilarious. Those sound fun. I want to try them. Uh, the, oh, and then Resident Evil 4 HD. Y'all seen that? Oh, it's a fan project uh, where they basically just redid all the textures, all, even the cutscenes, like the pre-rendered ones, they like redid. Like, it's wild to me. So wild. Um, but yeah, like it, all of those look so hilariously good. Uh, and I want to try them all. My only thing with Resident Evil 4 is that I wonder, you know what? I'm going to look this up. Resident Evil for mods. All right, so there's a nexus for this game. All right, there's GameCube coloring, a cheat table. <laughs> so replacing Leon with different characters like Iori from King of Fighters. Let's go. <laughs> Genshin Impact characters. Uh, this is this is hilarious. What Scarlet Nexus? What? Oh my god. I, see, what I'm looking for is... I'm, I'm looking for if there's, like, a controls mod? <laughs> like, to kind of change up how the game controls? Because, like, I'm going to be real. Every time I go back to that game, it gets harder and harder for me to play it. And like not again, it, it's not a bad game. I I love Resident Evil Four. I just it's really hard for me to sit down and play it and enjoy it. Um, so I'm I'm looking to see if if there's a controls change. Uh, Oh wait, there's also a Game Bananas page? Okay, I'll look that one up. Uh, there's a Keyboard Rebinder. There's a Gamma Fixing. Okay, come on, man. Game Banana. Y'all use Game Banana for mods? Game Banana is great. Modding in general is great. I know some people are like, eh, I don't, I don't like mods. Mods are fun. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> mods are fun. Play, play games. Have fun with games. No, I don't. I don't. What is CS2D? I don't. Go away. You know what? There's got to be. Is it an evil war? All right, here we go. Uh, there's a mod installer. 
there's uh, resources, oh, skins. Most of these are just skins, aren't they? Yeah, these are all skins and stuff. I don't care. Uh, gone. This is boring. I don't care what my gun looks like. I just want to play the video game good. You know what? Okay, yeah, there's there's nothing more. I was I was looking to see if there was something that gets rid of the controls. Um, but you know, it, it, it it's fine. It is what it is. No biggie. Um, what else we got going on? Uh, what you know what what would be a game y'all want me to review? Because I I'll take I'll take a viewer request like. Not, nothing like huge, please. Don't be like, I want you to review like Bloodborne blindfolded. Like, don't, don't. Just, <laughs> just like, you know, just like what would be a cool game? Something maybe I hadn't played before, preferably. RPGs would be up my alley, so I'd really enjoy if someone could do that. What I, in terms of what I've played though, like I, I've played most of the big ones. Um, like I've, I've played most of the Final Fantasy games. I think the only exceptions are 5 and 11. I've barely played 3, but I did play it. Um, and then uh, 8. I've barely played 8. 5, 8, 11. Yeah, I think that's it. 5, 8, and 11. Those are the only ones I haven't beaten in the Final Fantasy series. Dragon Quest, I'm never playing again. Uh, and I'm going to leave it at that. Um, and then there's... I guess Pokemon. I haven't really revisited any of the games in a long time. Uh, there's a lot of, like, like one-off RPGs that I've never played. Like, I, I've never played, like, Chrono Cross or... Um, I played Trigger, not Cross. Uh, but like Lunar, I've never played. Uh, I've never played like the Battle Network series. I've never played uh, Suikoden, um, which is weird because I ended up backing um, Ayuden Chronicle, wh which is the spiritual successor made by the series creators. Um, like even the whole team, like they they got the producer, the artists, the the musicians. Like they they were like, this is not. Mighty number nine. Like we we got more than the one guy working on. <laughs> but uh, I I guess I I've never finished Wild Arms and I've never played Wild Arms two onward. I, I played a bit of uh recoat or alter coat F like the remake of the first game. I've played a little bit of that. That one's not fun. <laughs> that one has insane load times for battles, and I'm good on that. I'm good on that. That is not fun to deal with. Like, if if you want true pain and suffering, you play an RPG that has loading times for battles. That it, that will test your patience. Really test your patience. Like, it is it is not a great time. But yeah, if 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 you have any games or that you would like to see, like, oh, you know what, I love this game, and I know he's never played it, like. You know what, it's probably fucked up to, for me to say this now, but like, I've said go to the comments so many times at this point that like, I hope you just edit your one comment and don't fill the chat with like five comments that are like, Rob, do this, Rob, do that. Just one comment. One comment. Hashtag one big comment. There you go. You know what? That's probably a good point. I've, I've run out of things to talk about. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I'm going to do another episode of the Mario 64 randomizer. Because uh, I am having fun with that. But I don't see that being, like, more than four or five episodes. Like, that, 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 that'll just be, like, a fun game to distract myself with. And then maybe I'll play something else. Like, what would be a different thing you want me to try out? Um, or maybe, like, for a commentary what game and who as a guest would be fun to have if I can get them. Like, I'm relatively small, so just keep that in mind. There are some people that are like, oh, analytically, like, 
this doesn't benefit me in any way or just I won't do this. Like there, there are people like that, right? So just be aware that like if someone doesn't do collabs a lot of the time, they wouldn't be down to come on here probably. But I'll send out messages if anyone has suggestions. And uh, yeah, that's it for me tonight. So 